Hello. 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 Oh. Hey. Hey. What, what, what are we hanging about? Brian came in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like that matters. So I will have to split out about halfway through to go pick up my wife, just so you know. Okay. And then I'll be back. So kill Xavier first. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I know how we do it. Yeah, apparently we just run away. <laughs> I didn't. I'm no, to no death. Cognar most definitely didn't. I can't believe we were... 40 points away from killing that dragon. Ugh. Oh, I haven't heard that part yet. Yeah, we, we were only 40 away, so if uh, Gorneo was there the entire fight, we would have killed the dragon. Oh, we know. Oh, he's not in this Skype call. Damn it. <coughs> Talking shit. you hear me now? Yeah. Yay. Hello. All right. Hello, hello. Is that about leveling up my character? What'd you choose? Level 10, right? <laughs> I, I think that's what he said, yeah. You know, about that whole leveling up thing. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think I spoke too soon. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you're speaking too late now, so. <laughs> What's done is done. Well, there's the potential retcon, then. Uh-oh. What did we do wrong? It's not what you guys did wrong. It's something that uh, I had intended to uh, let you experience that I, I forgot to throw at you. Oh. Now, now I'm curious. <laughs> I'm assuming death? You know? Death is always a possibility. <laughs> Okay, so Xavier seems to be the only one who's logged in. All it says, oh, it says Zen connected. But like none of my buttons are working. Game up. I'm in. Did you update? There was one. There was nothing. Yeah, I did yesterday. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Possible that my reason is frozen. Could be. That's what it looks like. Oh. Uh. Oh nope! There it went. <laughs> <laughs> and that was tonight's game hey, good, time, everybody. Awesome. good story good plot oh shit turn that off to protect the innocent So, um, I, I was hoping that Amanda and Chip would be here, but I guess we can take our time with that. However, I do want to point out 
that we're going to have a slight change to uh, to our our adventure. We're not going to be on the road anymore. We all wake up in Barovia. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be fun. Uh, no, Chesco texted me and basically said that uh, he's okay with you know dropping out of the the rotation until he gets done with this whole marathon thing, which he thinks will be around April. So. Uh, what we will be doing from here on is he will basically be like, you know, preserved in amber and <laughs> we'll just kind of carry him along in the bag of holding. And right. uh, and then when he comes back, we will, you know, retrieve him from some long lost location. So we're uh, go forward from there. going to fade over to a parallel universe without Chesco. Exactly. Where Chesco never right. existed, never will exist. So can I have his bow? <laughs> he never existed and he never will exist. that in this universe? Including his equipment. <laughs> well, no, that means his equipment went to somebody else because he wasn't there to take it the first time. No, but anything that he would have taken was never created. Damn. It was, or it wow. was specifically passed up on by his So he never puked in that kid. <laughs> never won that drinking contest. Nope. All that stuff is a... It's a dream of a dream. He never almost died in a call, uh, uh, alleyway. It was good. Oh, man. That means it was just Xavier who just went into town and murdered all those people. Yep. yep. <laughs> Xavier got in a fight by himself, somehow <laughs> survived. Claiming the, the joys of time. At... <laughs> man, Xavier, you're kind of messed up. people on his own. Or better yet. What can I say? I got some demons. Someone who acted and behaved a lot like Chesco started that whole thing, but then got murdered in the alleyway, and only Xavier escaped. With a fractured mind. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, so Chesco buddy. and Xavier were the same person all along? <laughs> it's my split personality. This is not a really bad horror movie. <laughs> oh, I was going for Tyler Durden, but... <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was thinking of, like, was it Room 7 or Room 13 or something with the split personalities and, and the uh, murders and... I don't yeah. think I ever saw that. Okay. Although, I have, I have watched playthroughs of Resident Evil 7, which is freaking amazing. <laughs> Could be like a me, myself, and Irene kind of moment. <laughs> that would a very different place. <laughs> Why am I being funny? <laughs> And why does my ass hurt? <laughs> anyway. Well, so. that, I'm really glad I didn't take that level 5 I was thinking about then. Actually, that means the XP only got split five ways instead of six. So, Which is why we're five. doing milestones, so it doesn't matter. Ah. But isn't it so much more impressive that we did all that stuff with five people instead of six? It is. <laughs> it was Octavia and I alone that took on 12 zombies. <laughs> Although, again, in this alternate timeline, there were fewer zombies. Aww. There were fewer yeah. elf birds. That butterfly needs to stop <laughs> flapping. This is getting crazy. I know, it's just, it's it's a rabbit hole. Don't Don't chase it. Somebody somewhere made a wish with a wish spell and just blanked Chesco out of existence. Wish Chesco out of existence. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. That's, that's pretty much exactly what happened. Oh, well, <laughs> I can't delete them off the internet, so those are ultimate. <laughs> Gonna have to go through and edit them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, edit every cool. single one of those. Our, our, some of our funniest moments are with Chesco. I can't get rid of those. With who? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Versus like an uh, Andy Kaufman thing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, 
You guys still there? Yep. Yeah, yes. still here. Just setting up a website. Setting up a website? What? Yeah. <laughs> Where in the world is Chesco now? <laughs> no, actual work stuff. Right. right. Work right. stuff. But it's 7 o'clock on a Wednesday. Work's supposed to be over. You'd think. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started with who's here, and if Amanda and or Chip can show up, we'll let them hop in when they get here. So, uh, where we picked up, or where we ended last time, was that the... uh, Oh, what was it? All oh, right, you guys were finishing your trip. Yes. You arrived at the city that wasn't actually a city, but was instead an abandoned keep full of demons or something. Dragon right. Speed. And then the next like three weeks of travel just went amazingly well. Man, we got paid. All right, guys. Except <laughs> in the middle of that trip, something happened that you've all blocked from your memory, but is slowly coming back to you. Uh oh. As you awakened one day after having a, another relatively peaceful day, been raining for the last couple of days, day and night, there had been kind of a, a thunderstorm roll through, and there had been what you noticed was a strange whistling sound on the wind. And as you awake in the morning light, you find yourselves surrounded. That's the worst kind of whistling. Oh, God. I don't like the name of this already. (laughs) I really wish I could hide those names. Fungus Humongous. (laughs) My fireball spell will come in handy. There's a fungus among us. So you find yourselves oh. completely surrounded Dear God. by this ridiculous overgrowth of fungi. And when you first you, wake up... Are you sure you haven't seen Resident Evil 7? <laughs> <laughs> this seems very topical all of a sudden. Oh... Uh, when you first wake up, the fungi are small, maybe a couple of inches, and you see them just growing everywhere. And the uh, the merchants and everyone else who are waking up around the encampment see this and are terrified. Every time someone steps on one and it's very hard not to step somewhere and step on one these mushrooms emit a puff of black spores and you hear the strangest sound it, you hear a moan of pain do these spores look to visibly affect whoever steps on them? Well, every time someone steps, they, they kind of jump and, and skip back and uh, normally end up stepping on something else and they can bring themselves under control and, and just hold still. Um, if you think you could do some sort of nature check, uh, right. you could try to identify what the, the fungus is. Yeah, the dragon tower is there. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the one person I relied on that is not here anymore, so... <laughs> so this is a uh, tower check. It's now that the tower is back. Oh. Okay, well, pretend I rolled that in the tower. That, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> it's such a good roll. It is when you keep taking the tower away. 
<laughs> I didn't take the tower away. I think the the most recent update was to fix the previous update. I think so because I got all my macros back. Or yeah, buttons on the bottom. So Aravan and Caden have rolled uh, Xavier. Uh, and I, I don't have nature. I have survival. Okay, well, if you don't have nature, then, then don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, however, I'm going to clear the owner on Octavia. And you're no longer the owner of Chesco. Aww. Uh and we'll just we'll hold off on Chip. I'll see if he's got. He does not have nature anyway. Uh, does anyone feel like running Octavia tonight? I can give it a shot. She also doesn't have nature, so. Okay. Do you have to be uh, proficient to roll? You don't actually have to be proficient to roll. Uh. I will allow you to roll unpro- unproficient or unskilled. Okay. Oh. Well, I'll, I'll throw a roll in then. I'm, I'm a wood elf. <sighs> okay. Uh, so, as the, the three of you kind of talk it over since you standing relatively close to each other. Uh, Aravan, you're just, you just don't know. You're not sure what, what these things are. Uh, No idea what these things are. You and Xavier both look around. You kind of take a closer look and you think you've seen these before. And Xavier, you in particular, you think you've seen this before, and you're pretty sure these things are poisonous. Oh, you've never seen awesome. a you've never seen a growth nearly like this, but it it bears a striking resemblance to something you've seen before in the forest that you were you know taught to avoid. Yeah, we're right smack in the middle of it. All right. How does it react to acid? <laughs> Before he uh, you casts can... anything, I'm going to say, everyone, it's poisonous. Try to cover your mouths. And I will put a bandana over my mouth. Just to try to alleviate At, at the word poisonous, like a, a murmur comes up throughout the entire caravan. And you see people like quickly trying to cover their mouths. The the merchants you know, start kind of yelling at each other. Did you say poison? Po- really? Poison? God, how are we going to get out of here? What are we going to do? I've got the horses. Someone, uh, uh, someone come. Oh, it, it's just, there's chaos. Everyone is trying very hard not to move. And yet they're still trying to do what they can to protect the people they're traveling with, the, the horses. And everyone's very worried about the, the fact that these things are poisonous. I don't know. Calm down. Calm down. The more you fuss about, the more those spores get blasted into the air. The stiller you remain, the safer we may be. And as as you start to try to calm people and everyone talks about kind of what, what you're going to do, uh, I need you to make me a perception check. Okay. Well, Aravan, as you look around, you know, it's, you think it's probably, it's only been about 10 minutes since you first woke up and started investigating this stuff. But you think, you think these things are actually growing bigger, like at a pace you can almost see. Like you swear a few minutes ago they were shorter. And Caden. You're convinced of it. You know that when you first started looking at them, as you started to inspect them, that they were 
about the size of champagne corks. Now they look like a champagne cork that someone is somehow inflating with air. All right, so I'll relay the information that they are growing and quickly, and that we should probably not stand here while that's happening. But you start telling people that they start looking at you like, are you crazy? If they're poisonous, I'm not walking through that. Like, well, if you don't walk through it, it'll be walking through you soon enough. Make me a uh, intimidation check. <laughs> the uh, the people you're you're speaking to look at you and just kind of brush you off. Like no mushroom's gonna grow through me or stomp on me, but it could very well poison me. I'm not moving. If you're so brave, clear a path for us. I'll clear a path for me. <laughs> and maybe my friends, but who knows? Alright, so are we like truly like it's just as far as I can see, this stuff's everywhere? Pretty much. And uh, we Katie don't is gonna uh, it was Xavier who said that these things are poisonous, right? Yes. Xavier and Kate Katie's... both. Okay. Octavia's gonna look to both of them and ask them both of them, I guess, if fire works with these things. Do we know? Uh, you don't. You you could attempt it and find out. I mean, it's a mushroom. It's uh, it is a, a fungus. You think that it'll probably burn, but it's also very wet. All right, so I'll, I'll talk to you to try burning it, and I'll try using acid splash. See how that does. Just to try something. Octavia's gonna launch a sacred flame as far as she can. Uh, I'm not positive about the range. It's these are 30 or 60 feet. 30 or 60. <laughs> well, the mushroom fails its dexterity save. Since <laughs> it doesn't have any. 60 feet away. Hopefully we're out of the effect. Uh, are it's you, also like, radiant damage. Are you trying to avoid anyone being close to it? Yeah, she's kind of targeting something out of the way so that if there's another like burst of these spores that nobody like, immediately in inhales or any other effect. As the as the sacred flame coalesces about this one particular mushroom that she's she's picked out, it seems to pop. And you do see a cloud of spores come up and you also hear a scream. As if someone had just been stabbed. Hmm. Well, that kind of worked. The mushroom didn't seem too happy about it, though. Did we see any sort of reaction from anywhere? Uh, that that one mushroom that you saw her kind of concentrating on. Uh, Disappeared. It's now basically fallen to the ground, crumpled. Um, that doesn't seem to have triggered <clears throat> anything in particular in the area around it. All right, so I'll, I'll try a different spot away from everybody with acid splash. You get almost exactly the same result. It splashes. It starts to like smoke, and then it bursts. And again, you hear that. It's it's a very odd sound. It's 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 not like a person yelling out in pain, and yet it sounds like something is in pain. It's not vocal, but it's it like gnaws at you. It's, it's almost like like a, a moan and 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 cry of pain have been distilled down into some sort of 
noxious essence. And that's what is released every time one of these things is, is burst. All right, so, so we tried reading. Kane's going to make an arcana check to see if that triggers anything. Oh. Uh, triggers anything in what way? Tickles his memory, like, does he... Does that sound description sound you've, familiar? You've never dealt with a mushroom that did that. Okay. Okay, not liking the sound that's going to stuff something in his ears so he doesn't have to hear it. And then he's going to try to like clear a patch, just a, an area that's at least not growing somewhere, see if he can stop it somehow. Okay. And what are you going to try to use? Just going to keep acid splashing, or are you going to... Acid splash seems to do it, and that actually is somewhat AoE, so... Okay. So, over the course of the next few minutes, you're able to continue to splash and splash and splash, and uh, we'll say that for our purposes, uh, you've managed to clear we'll say this area over here of is like completely of, of any sort of mushroom but uh, even with the kind of trying to stuff your ears with something to cut the noise down it it just keeps racking at you and everybody around you is hearing it and they keep cringing and jerking and I need all of you to make me a constitution save So, when we came through here originally, we didn't see any of the spores, right? No, you set up camp for the night, you didn't see anything like this. Alright, I would like to, to scan in the distance for shadowy figures or some kind of spellcaster or angry druid. Okay. Just to see if, uh, you know, someone's out there doing some shit. As you look around, you know, you scan, you don't see any any figures anywhere. Uh, nothing seems like it was... You, you just don't see any evidence that this was foisted upon you by some sort of creature. Right. Uh, all right, I will say, you guys were remarkably consistent with your uh, constitution saves. Yeah. Everyone well, failed. Nice. <laughs> Good to know. And so, uh, as Caden is clearing this patch of these uh, of these mushrooms, the the noise it it finally it just it just gets to you. You just can't stand it anymore. And I need each of you to roll me a d twenty. Open or. Uh, doesn't, First, doesn't matter. Open tower, either yeah, one for this. First will be for Aravan. Second will be for Octavia. Oh, it separates oh, the same it number. <laughs> okay. So, um, as as these noises just overwhelm you, and several more of your companions that are that are watching this process, each of you eventually just reaches the breaking point. Uh, it's just these it's almost like thousands of cries of pain and, and, and death agony that seem to be you know just emanating every time one of these mushrooms is popped you just can't take it and you have to just stop and like you, you end up hunkering down you cover your ears and just kind of rock and try to clear your mind try to think of something positive something to, to force out these noises that you've been hearing and it takes each of you a little while to, to, to settle back down and, and kind of become safe to, to even focus on anything. And you see this happening just all around you. Every, everywhere that the caravan is and people have been moving around, you, it, you can see that eventually they just, they just can't take it anymore. They, they, they have to stop. 
they, they end up sitting down and just kind of hunkering there. And so Xavier, after about 18 minutes, oh, I want you're to able up. to, you're able to kind of <laughs> come back to yourself and Octavia and Aravan, it takes each of you about 11 minutes and, and Caden, it takes you about 12 minutes. And Numa, yes, you're just incapacitated. What happened? <laughs> you slept too long. The spores, man. The spores. Oh, I don't. Okay, that doesn't you, sound you, like it's too bad. You have to log in and check. <laughs> I overslept. <laughs> um. Well, uh, so this seems like natural spores to us, to Caden and I. Yeah, you you think you've seen these things before. Hmm. But the screams doesn't sound familiar, right? No. The noise. It it doesn't, but then again, you were told to stay away from these things, yeah. so probably for that reason. They should have specified. Yeah. Vague warnings help no one. <laughs> yeah. I was, gonna, I was I was wondering if it might be necrotic in nature and maybe damaging it is making it worse and maybe we need to restore it via healing of some kind maybe possibly well like in, the, in the time that it's taken you know, that you've been trying to kind of clear out a spot and and dealing with the, the screams and, and trying to settle your mind and come, come back to yourself you notice that these things are now each about six inches tall Ooh. They've they've gone from you know, champagne cork to about six inches, and it's just it's everywhere. So what you have noticed, amazing. additionally, is that while it's extremely disturbing to have to deal with, uh, it these things do appear to be easy to to destroy. It's like stepping on them, in, you know, brushing up against them. It seems to. It's almost like they. It's almost like they're trying to be burst. Oh. Am Imagine I supposed to be looking at this fungus, humongous map? Yep, yeah. that's where you guys yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the road. Yep. Yes. This is where you guys had camped. Oh. But it wasn't like this when we came. So, who's got the bleach uh, spell? <laughs> I've got mending. <laughs> um, Are we the only ones here? Where is the rest of the caravan here with us? Yeah. Yeah, they're all surrounded by these mushrooms okay. too. Yeah, everybody's there. All right, as long as we're not all uh, alone in our misery. I'd like you to send out a pulse of divine sense to get. Uh, a feel for any celestial fiends or undead within 60 feet. Kind of like a just in case there's something beneath these mushrooms causing them. Okay. Um, and I guess I'll do the, the curious thing. We've tried, you know, damaging it. We've stepped on it. Um, I'm going to send out my mage hand and within 30 feet of me just start poking these things. And again, every time, every time you poke one, every time one is, you know, really affected in any direct manner, it tends to to burst and then release that that moan, shriek, pain, groan. Does it go away after it releases the spores? Yeah, the kind of the the body of the mushroom kind of collapses and. And it sort of fizzles at that point. It's kind of like you've released the air out of a balloon and it just kind of collapses again. I, I think we got to just run through it, guys, and just hope our brains don't explode. It's not just us we have to worry about. We the entire caravan that we have to get through this. If this continues on for miles or more, it'll make the journey even more difficult to withstand the screams 
Indeed. So, Airman, as you're before you've discussed this, as you're pushing your senses out and trying to pick up any trace of of undeath, uh, you are able to. It seems like there's just a slight hint of something. It's not a very strong feeling. It's. It doesn't seem just like you don't you don't get the impression that these mushroom uh, things are are undead by any stretch. But they do feel, I know, somehow slightly tainted. So the last bit of the divine set spell would also let me know that, it, or I would also be able to detect the presence of a place or object that's been consecrated or desecrated. You that don't get that sense. Okay. Okay. And I'm getting that feeling coming off of these mushrooms. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's just... It's more like a, a bad odor than it is anything else. It's not overpowering. It's not... It's not clearly like, wow, that thing over there is evil. Right. It's just... Ick. All right. When we hear the noise, is it within our head, or are we actually just hearing it? No, you actually hear it. I mean, it like, stuffing your ears helps a little bit, but it, it just seems to come through. And the reason that it that it keeps overwhelming people is it seems to call up just feelings of, of grief and remorse. Like, you know, it reminds you of all the things you've lost. All the times you couldn't save someone. All the times that you know, things or people you, you cared about were taken from you. Man, these shrooms are real downer, guys. Is it affecting the horses, too, or just us? The horses definitely look skittish. They they do not seem as affected, but you can tell they they don't like it here. So we've tried popping. How far is this? How far is this growth uh, spread? As far as you can see, in both directions. And they appeared overnight. Yes, and they yeah. since yeah. since you first noticed them when you woke up, they've grown from the size of small champagne corks to about six inches high. They seem to be continuing to grow. In a matter of but, minutes. But they already they were already that spread out. Yes. I don't suppose anybody can fly. I can jump really far, but not that far. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Wow. So it's it's we've established that it's when it releases the spore is when it shrieks. Yeah. Yeah. When it, when one of those things bursts, it seems like it's it releases a, a spray of spores and it also releases the sound of of pain and and death. Mm. And I already tried mm. scanning around for. Like a caster or something. I didn't see anybody. So, what what if we got one cart to go through and blaze a trail, and then just get everyone going single file, and uh, lessen the amount of these mushrooms that get popped? You can certainly try to arrange that. And just get all the guards on top of the cart, so it's just the wheels and the horses going through. Have you any plan? Should that horse fall? 
No. But it's better than us standing here with these mushrooms getting better. Or bigger. So, is there a... Have we established a area of effect? I mean, if we throw a rock and hit one 50 feet away or something, do we still get the um, psychic effect or whatever happens? More to, is, it hurt, is it hurting our psyche when these things are shrieking or we just feel bad? It's not like causing... It does not seem to be causing psychic pain. Is my brain melting? <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, that kind of depends. Uh, you'll just have to see as you go. <laughs> so I haven't determined whether it feels like my brain is melting. No, you know that you really don't like the sound these things make. And you really wish everybody around you would quit making them make it? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you don't feel like, you know, you, you don't feel like you've been, I don't know, on a bad acid trip or an LSD or, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um. So have, what have y'all tried? Have we tried it? Have we anything with water? Fire and we done acid so far. Okay, no water. Anything with water yet. It, it's been raining for the last two days yeah. and continues to rain. Oh, it's been raining for the past couple of days. No matter. Oh, well. So have we actually tried fire yet? Yeah. No, you, you did radiant. Or, well, radiant, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, not actually. Dry fire. these shrooms out, right? I mean, maybe. They're thriving in the moisture. I mean, I'm willing to give it a shot. Do I have a torch? <laughs> I got chest this lantern. Um. I got a torch. I'm gonna. Oh wait, it's raining. You can still light a torch even in the rain. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna light a torch and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to just, just hold my breath and stick it near a mushroom and see what happens. Well, okay. he's doing that. Ervan would kind of like to use his shield, <laughs> like a, like an umbrella over a couple of the mushrooms nearby, to see if it's maybe the rain that's making these things grow so fast. You kind of just like well, shield a couple of them from the rain for a little bit to see if, since they're growing so fast, if there's an obvious effect. So how how long do you want to do that? Until we come up with another idea, I guess. <laughs> <It'll just hold laughs> so, so if it takes like an hour, you're willing to just stand there for an hour? If it takes an hour, yes. <laughs> I really okay. hope we come up Is with Aravan another plan. Is that dumb to hold shield up for an hour? Well, you, something better. <laughs> you, you don't notice any immediate effect and uh, Xavier as you bring a torch down onto one of these mushrooms uh, the mushroom again bursts again releases that noise that's slowly driving everyone mad and it looks like maybe you've some of the spores catch fire uh, but you don't think that it it seems to have about the same effect as everything else that's been tried so far. Alright. Well, that was worth trying. Is this a trap in any way? <laughs> Did you actually expect me to answer that? Well, I, I'm just proficient in finding traps, that's all. You found this. Yeah. <laughs> There's no question you found this. You brought this upon us. Seems like it found us. Mm. I'm just I'm trying I'm just, We know it takes two. Yeah. I'm just going so through everything I takes got. Takes two to fungus? <laughs> Something like that, yes. Alright. Um I have advantage of saving throws made to avoid and resist traps. No, that's not that's not really helpful here. I don't really have anything besides running through it. 
I could try detect magic ritual, but it's ten minutes, right? Yeah. I got nothing else. I'll I'll go ahead and start detect magic ritual. See if that tells me anything. Like, so far, you don't seem to have too many people willing to move. So, so yeah. you got some time. <laughs> well, while those mushrooms so... are getting taller, right? Yes. So I'm going to use my, because I don't get to use this much, uh, I'm going to use my elemental attunement, which is part of my elemental discipline, mm -hmm. to cause earth. I'm going to, I'm going to sh without touching it, uh, I think. Uh, so cause earth, fire, water, or mist that can fit within a one-foot cube to shape itself into a crude form you de designate for one minute. So I want it to, uh, <clears throat> I want to try to, to see what happens when I cover one of the, the fun guys with earth. So basically you're kind of like till the ground up in a, in a one foot cube. Yep. And, and pilot it on top of, of, uh, of one of the, uh, okay, so mushrooms. as you, uh, as you basically invert the ground where you're focusing and the mushroom starts to sink a little bit and the dirt kind of shapes up around it and crashes down on top of it. And you're in this little square in front of you. Uh, the scream is slightly muffled, and you don't see much of the spores spread out. But uh, it certainly appears that that mushroom is, is has met the fate that so many others have this day. <laughs> so that was that was one foot in front of you. It would uh, be it was in a one cu one foot cube. Yeah, one cubic foot. So, um, right, Newman, you got some work to do. <laughs> Plow the road. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, that's. Mm, yeah, you, you might as well ask me to uh, construct the Great Wall of China at this point, because <clears throat> uh, it would take me that long. But, um, all right. So, we, have we tried pouring water on these things yet? Fresh water? No. It has been raining upon them. I know, I, um, it's, well, I, I figure that if we pour water on it, you're trying to deflect water to see if it would dry it out. I, I, I guess we could tell if it, if water has anything to do with their growth, then by adding water, maybe that would tell us the, the same thing. <clears throat> Although I would think that the, maybe the, the mushrooms underneath the wagons would already have shown some effect, I guess, since they've been out of the, the rain for some time. Is there any difference? Would you like in to the... look under the yes. uh, wagons? <laughs> Let me look under the wagon. No uh, matter you bring that up, that's an excellent point. My <laughs> that's that's what I was wondering. I was like, why are you holding your shield up? <laughs> Numa's having his stream of consciousness moments here. Uh, As you look under the uh, wagon, it, it appears that the mushrooms there are pretty much the same size and <laughs> shape as the others. So Xavier, it would appear the rain has little more effect upon these mushrooms than your torchlight. Yeah. Has anyone tried talking to the mushrooms? No, but you're in the middle of a ritual, so you can't. I know, that's why I'm asking. You want me to ask it how it feels? I'm in the middle of a ritual. You'll have to figure out what to say. Right, I'm willing to try anything harebrained. I mean, if Octavius says talk to the elk and it'll make the mushrooms go away, I'll talk to a fucking elk. So, um, yeah, sure. I, I guess I'll ask the mushroom how it feels or if there's some way we can help it. Maybe it's semi sentient. And Aravan's going to kind of wait a beat or two and then ask that basically the exact same thing, but in Sylvan. Well, I can do it in Elvin. So I'm not gonna do any comments, but oh, oh, you're talking plants. Sylvan. <laughs> oh, all right, we're talking to shrooms, guys. It's like we've been on shrooms. It's great. <laughs> so as you say this, you kind of direct it at the the mushrooms, kind of in front of you, sort of a general query, and as you wait for a response. Suspense is killing me. 
He has to translate it into shroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very slow language. <laughs> Think Entish, but quieter. Ah, yeah, yeah. And that's the response you get. Nothing. Got it. Well, did you not get it? Nope. Oh. You should listen harder. <laughs> <laughs> they were very clearly communicating with you. I see. And what did they say? No idea. Erevan, did you catch any of that? I'm afraid they remained silent to me. Erevan's going to take just a step to his right. Over whatever, or a step in the direction of the caravan. North. I believe I might be behind him, so step in that direction. And you unfortunately manage to step on a couple of these mushrooms. He accepts that and is just willingly guinea pigging himself to see what happens. Basically, the same thing that's been happening every time anyone else stepped on one a puff right. of, of spores and a sound. Which at this point is kind of like scraping your nails across a chalkboard. It, just every one of them is it's just that much harder to deal with. You might be right in that loading up the wagons and proceeding as quickly as we can through what remains. How far away from the uh, canvas covered wagons? Uh, they're probably 80 feet away from you, further up the line. All right. And they're just kind of standing around. Uh, yeah, everyone stockings. at this point is kind of like watching the, the very few number of people who are willing to move around or do anything to see what happens to them. The, the chatter you hear is basically some variation from several different voices of what is this? Oh God, we're all doomed. They said they're poison. We're all going to die. How are we going to get out of here? So this has never happened to the caravans before. No one seems to have any recollection of something like this happening. Feels like this should be easier than it is. Looks like we're missing something here. Hmm. And it's not like when we were killing the 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 cultist Drake things where it's like you kill them and it's like in your mind. It's just out in the open, so it's Yeah, everyone around you seems to be hearing it. Yeah. I think I want to run for it, guys. I mean, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till uh, till Caden finishes whatever he's doing, sitting there reading, um, and then I'm just gonna run as fast as I can. Okay, so it takes Caden about ten minutes to prepare his detect magic ritual, and in the meantime, everyone else is kind of coming resigned to the fact that something horrible is almost certainly going to happen to everyone in this caravan and Caden is just sitting there going through the motions of his of his spell and reciting his incantations and as he finally finishes he becomes more aware of the area around him and each of you lights up in his mind like a, a candelabra with several interesting points of light. So he's able to determine the the magical items you carry or wear or have on in your in your bags. And around him everything else seems 
pretty normal. It doesn't pick up any sort of glow or or sensation from the mushrooms that have surrounded everything. Nor from the the air or the rain. It seems that in his immediate vicinity the only magical things are what each of you carry. All right. How, so, how would one check to see if this is a hallucination? That'd be like a medicine or like I, I'm insight the mushrooms no no no. well i mean i'm trying to think of like yeah maybe the mushrooms set off a gas that's now making us paranoid as fuck and like everything we do is we're hypersensitive to our senses like i'd like to to see if i could like introvertly like check myself and see if i'm so you can roll either an insight on one of your companions or a medicine check and try to determine if you or they are under some form of influence. Okay. Uh, well, I am proficient in insight, so I am going to check... Let's see, who's been acting really silly? Probably me. Um... Numa. <laughs> Numa, of course. <laughs> no, he's doing the smart thing. He moved the earth. Uh, exactly, that seems odd. Mud. That seems odd. <laughs> oh, he's doing... That ain't right. Um... <laughs> No, I'm actually going to check uh, Caden. Just to see if he's all there. All right. Caden, would you describe how you're feeling? Caden describes how he's feeling. Yep. Gotcha. And how is Caden feeling? <laughs> no, I'm saying you, you tell us. I just told you. <laughs> Sounds like he's normal. <laughs> Completely useless and not helpful in all ways. Yeah. Yep, pretty normal. <laughs> Alright, so it doesn't seem like we're being affected <clears throat> psychoactrically. Alright. I, I, I think... At this point, you see a group of three merchants making their way very carefully and slowly back towards you guys and back towards uh, Lita who's also near you and they come up, up and say you're well we, we know that the the five of you joined up with this caravan together even though you serve different different merchants and you have you've done many brave and and good things during our travels to protect this caravan to help us and to help your your fellow travelers we beseech you if there's anything you can do to get us out of here please do so. We've exhausted what we know, and and we fear that the two, and we we were told that two of you have seen these things before. Tell us what we must do, and we will follow you. Uh, I I looked to to Caden and, and kind of shrugged my shoulders and say. I was taught to just avoid them. I don't know. I could try to recall to see if maybe there's something that they said on how to deal with these. Uh, so I read over the spell detect poison and disease. And while Airbag doesn't have it prepared, Octavia could have because she's got level two slots. And casting that would allow her to sense the presence and location of poisons, poisonous creatures, and diseases within 30 feet. 
and she'd identify the kind of poison and poisonous creature in each case. And so, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that with her. Assuming maybe like a name for these mushrooms or the like, we'll maybe do something to jog somebody's memory. Like, okay. Oh, these are the warts hag mushrooms. And they'll be like, oh, the wild one. Yeah. And then Caden's going to make an investigation check, see if he can go over everything they've talked about and discovered and try and come up with something to explain what's going on and what they should do. Okay. So, um, Octavia you know, concentrates, makes a prayer, and begins pushes out her senses. And she doesn't detect any poison. And she's going to look over and give Caden and Xavier glances. I let them know that, guys, these, these mushrooms aren't poisonous. Can you pop one and then do that? Sure, she's perfectly capable of uh, popping one and. It doesn't last up to 10 minutes. So, yeah, she'll reach, she'll step on one nearest her and see if anything comes out in that cloud of spores. And as the spores poof and waft into the air, she, much like when you detected or the presence of evil or, or undeath, there's just the faintest glimmer of, of something that sort of registers as poison, but not really. All right. Who wants to try eating one of these things? Well, that's your suggestion. I I believe you're perfectly capable. <laughs> Should you die, rest assured, I you, you got will my back. mourn your loss dearly. <laughs> you'll, you'll mourn. <sighs> and I was assuming Caden didn't come up with anything. Uh, tell me again what you were trying to do. You were investigating for just all everything we discussed, everything we found, like no magic. Octavia's assuming she shared her information, what she found when she popped one, the screaming, like if he can come to any sort of conclusion about what he knows. Okay. Uh, as you started to try and put all this stuff together, what you're coming up with is that while you're confused about why Octavia is not detecting poison, uh, you think that whatever is going on, it doesn't seem to have an immediate effect. It doesn't seem like, you know, like if these were immediately poisonous, half the, half the caravan should be dead by now. You're not sure it's not going to have some longer term impact but you think that your best chance is probably just to try to forge ahead and get out of here before you get exposed to too much more of it. All right, so Caden will relay that again, hopefully in a more persuasive manner this time, and say, let's just go. Caden, do, We're you, not... do you have the sleep spell? I do. What if we put half the people to sleep and then ran the caravan through as fast as we could? So that way, if someone, a driver passes out, we can wake the others and chain our way through. It appears if we cover our ears, it helps too. I'm not sure I have enough castings to cover that many people. I've got three. 
I would have three. So, I mean, something. It, it's an option. We can keep some people in reserve, keep them asleep. So they're not. I think, I think we're better, better off with everybody awake and aware as much as possible. Okay. And just going. <clears throat> Works for me. All right, so I, if I were to go on the first wagon through, it's the horse should fall for a reason. I can potentially rouse it once again by laying my hands upon it. Mm-hmm. All right, so I, I think I, I think Caden's right. We need to pile everyone on the the wagons and just hightail it through here, double speed. And that's the plan we're going to relay to the couple of merchants who walked yeah. up to us. Uh, yeah, I'll, and I'll and speak up to Lita and say, you know, we need to just move through it. The longer we stay here, the worse it gets. And they all basically look at you and say, all right, uh, get with, with, you lead the way. Right. Uh, well, I guess I will gingerly, as 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 best I can, avoid the mushrooms. And as I'm going through, I'll tell everyone to find the person that's got the cotton and start stuffing their ears. Maybe that's uh, Numa's guy. Oh wait, no, he doesn't pack his stuff and soft stuff. Um, yeah, to tell everyone to start packing their ears, and I'm gonna try to move forward as fast as I can. Fast, but delicately. The green lady Imsa doesn't happen to be a druid, does she? Because <laughs> she's green? Only asking because it could be very useful to our current predicament. She basically looks and says, do I look like a, a druid to you? Really? You look somewhat well? druidish. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm not druidish, alright? I don't mean to offend my lady, simply running out of ideas. <laughs> I think we plug our ears and just haul ass. So I just linked on Skype what uh, most of these mushrooms look like, only much bigger. I don't suppose anyone has like a, a jar or something that we can maybe take a sample with us? I don't know. Container? So far, you're pretty sure you wouldn't be able to actually get a sample? We can use Since... move this earth thing to like move the earth up so we can just carry it. Rather than, like, attacking one from the top down, could Aravan try to, like, pluck one from the face? Sure. To keep the cap of the mushroom intact and see if what happens. And as you uh, reach down and pluck it, it's it appears like it almost has a, a hollow stem. Because instead of the, the spores jettisoning from the top they actually start to kind of leak out the bottom hmm? no noise not as much of a noise no Xavier I don't believe we'll be able to preserve any of them to take with us when Numa when Numa uh, move the soil. Did the soil look different? Not noticeably, no. Not noticeably, okay. Huh. Okay, so it was it was not as troublesome or irritating when he pulled the cap off instead of busting the cap. And it wasn't pleasant, but no. it didn't seem quite as bad. Do we 
need like a lawnmower to go through here or something? You know, <laughs> cut them at the, cut them at the roots. Is anybody carrying a scythe? I am not. Hey, Aravan, can you stick your finger down the hole of that mushroom and see what happens? I'm going to offer the mushroom out to him in his direction. I'm ten feet away. <laughs> I will toss the mushroom no! over oh, to okay. Xavier. <laughs> I try to catch it so it doesn't pop another mushroom. I meant the one in the ground where it's leaking stuff. Did the spores come out of the mushroom like in my hand that I plucked out, or did, did it shoot, come, leak out from the ground? No, it leaked out from the stem of the mushroom. Oh. Stem, the bit that I had picked or the stem that was left sticking out of the ground? What you had picked. Oh. Okay. Well, now, just to be clear, how far can we see ahead of us? Uh, you can see probably 300 yards. And, and they're that they're that far, and we don't know where they stop. Correct. <clears throat> Maybe we are hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know anything. I think we have to go... I think we cover our ears and yeah, I'll, I'll, and go I'll, on. I'll quiet. I'll, I'll try to, you know, maybe jump from wagon to wagon to avoid as many mushrooms as I can. But I'll try to get to the front one, plug my ears, and get that thing ready to go. Because honestly, the you wouldn't have to put everybody to sleep because you would think that the 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 wagons in the back would disturb the least amount of mushrooms. So. Well, that's that's last last case scenario. We have to start putting people to sleep. So. Okay. All right. Well, that's what so, I'm doing. What's your plan? I'm going to the first wagon and getting it ready. Okay. Everyone's gonna put up his shield and take out his halberd and just start clearing a path as best he can for right now for the front wagon to take. Okay. And as you uh, go up there and start clearing this path, even, you know, clearing so many at once, it's almost like a constant sound that you know, this these moans and, and the pain, the, the remorse and guilt it's dragging up from your subconscious. Uh, so I need everyone... Who is going to be helping clear the path? Uh, make me a Constitution save. Well, I guess I'm in the in the front, so I'll make a con save. I don't know where I'm at. Where's my wagon? But that's what I'm saying. It, they the the merchants have essentially asked you guys to step up and help. If you're going to help clear the path, I need you to make a Constitution save. Is this a trap? And the, do I get advantage on it? <laughs> yes. No. Octavia is <laughs> going to help as well. Can she do like a flaming sphere and just burn the shit path through there? She could for up to a minute, yeah. I mean, she can roll that ball a long oh, way God. for a minute. Being reminded of her own abilities, she will indeed summon up a flaming sphere. I mean, it's better to get the screaming over as fast yeah. as possible. Just, you know, I don't know, maybe a shatter, just blow everything up. I don't, all I could do is poke one thing at a time. I like the flaming sphere because that guy can also keep rolling forward and yeah. keep clearing the path. You can move it up to like 30 feet, right? 20 feet? Not checking right yeah, now. basically you'd be moving at uh, something slightly more than a walking pace. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so Caden's helping, Octavia's around. helping, Xavier's helping, Aravan's helping. Duma, are you helping clear the path? Well, no, I was in the mind of telling my buddy, the Chinaman, the China guy, to, to cover his ears. <laughs> We're about to head out. That's why I was wondering where my wagon was at. <laughs> he's back on the back <laughs> holding the he, boxes. He's well aware of what's about to happen. Oh, okay. All, all the merchants are kind of communicating, and they're basically all watching you guys to see what you do. Well, then I had other idea of maybe making uh, mud balls to shove down the horse's ears so they don't get screwed up, too, but. Anyway, you just put mud in the horse's ears. No, that's, That'll piss him off. I don't off. know. <laughs> I don't know. Does that piss the horse off? I guess after I try the first one, I'll figure it out. Oh, God, don't do this. Pick out a veterinarian school <laughs> for a reason. <laughs> okay. So, anyway. Yep. Oh. Uh, well, I need Airvan. Well, okay, Numa, one last chance. Are you helping clear the path? Well, I don't really have anything to help clear. I mean, I've got a quarter staff, I guess, I could use. Well, you've seen the Aravan being very effective with his uh, halberd. And these yeah, things I, don't I, seem to be particularly difficult to destroy. Uh, but, to you destroy. know, six inches high, that's, uh, yeah. They're now actually, uh, enough time has passed that they're about a foot tall now. Oh my gosh! They're going that, gosh. that fast? Yeah. You guys have. Yeah. yeah. Effectively, you guys have been sense. debating this for you know <laughs> approaching an hour. We can. We've literally. We've literally just sat there and. It's pretty the fast for us. Yeah. We're getting better, guys. Yeah. You normally, it yeah. takes us three hours to screw something up. <laughs> yeah. So I will help knock them down. Uh, yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I need you to make a constitution save. Oh Lord! No. Okay, hang on. <laughs> Should make my way. Should have stayed the Kirk. <laughs> In the kitchen. Oh, Constitution check. Constitution. Constitution. Oh Lord! I should have said no. I don't have. A, is the tower still gone? Nope, it's back. I don't see it. Did I have to do something to? to I don't did have you, a tower. Did you update? No, I didn't. You know probably I was didn't update. update. <laughs> Here, here's your constitution check. Do with it what you will. Oh no! Okay. Oh. It doesn't matter. Mine's constant. Uh, That's the wrong one anyway, Numa. You need to save. Oh, constitution save or check? Save. Yeah, I'm sorry. You could live. Did, do you get a bigger bonus to your save? No, it's zero. That's what I'm saying. I suck. My constitution is a 10. Oh, I'm slight of build. This isn't like okay. a charming effect, right? Just make it sure. So, in that case, I need all five of you Fuck. to roll me a D100, or in this case, your percentile die. Uh, two D10. Is there one of those here? You basically have to roll two D10s, and the first one will be your... Tens, the second oh, will be the percentage. ones. Percentage, how about yeah? I got it. uh, it's got a percentage one. Eighteen. Okay, so Aravan rolled a. Oh wait, you guys. I guess that's what a twenty. Yeah. Wait, how did you guys get the actual yeah. percentage dice? You uh, right click on the <clears throat> the ten, the one day ten. I think there's a percentage one. Sure is percentage. I just did a slash die one d one hundred. Oh, that is so nice. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'll be I like that way better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So with a fifty three, Caden. For the next eight hours. Oh, God. Oh, excuse me, not eight hours. Uh, 800. Basically, for the next two days. Sorry. Wow. For the next two days, uh, you and you pick a person or object around you. 
Um, Fine, Green Imsa. Okay. <laughs> Green Imsa has just become your lucky charm. <laughs> you are convinced uh, as these screams work on your brain, something gives a little. And you just become convinced that like when you're standing closer to her, the screams aren't so bad. When you get further away from her, it seems like they're worse again. Oh my god. And so, for the next two days, only when you're within 30 feet of her do you feel like you're actually safe. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my god. That's so I can roll with this. Okay. Uh... Numa with a 71. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the next. Uh, nine, three years. For the next 50 hours. Wow. Two days. You have uncontrollable tremors. Not good for a guy who uses his hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, as you know break you plates anyway, so. Pulse. Hey, does that give me like a plus five on attack? Like a vibratory <laughs> nope. effect? Don't handle if the you, China, Numa. I, if I you end up in combat, China, China, China it imposes really disadvantage on attack rolls, ability checks, and saving throws that involve strength or dexterity. Oh, that's like perfect for me. Man, that was like the curse customized <laughs> for a month. You're working Maybe. with China, and all you do is use your hands. <laughs> so, that's, right, that's boys. the next 50 hours. So, we need a two-day vacation somewhere. Uh, Xavier, yeah. if yes. you'll roll a percentile die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 52. 52. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, well, on the table... Okay, roll again. Okay. I'm not giving you the same one that Adam got. Oh, shit. 100. Oh, shit. <laughs> you really good you believe you have a mushroom. Do, does that mean I win? <laughs> I'm a mushroom. <laughs> um, uh -oh. Let's just say no. Oh, no, guys. <laughs> For the next day and a half, uh -huh. you fall unconscious. Oh, okay. <laughs> in the middle weird. of clearing all this stuff out, the, oh, the noises the just, they just, they, they drive into your brain and it just shuts down. Oh. Like you pass out and nobody can wake you up. Oh, cool. Damn it, Xavier's sleeping on the job. At least I fell asleep driving the cart. So you were, you were actually driving the cart. Yeah, but I figured that uh, Aravan was like right in front of me, clearing away. So I was like, I was going to be affected by it anyway. So that makes it okay for you to try to run me over. I was about to say, uh, <laughs> roll me a uh, roll me an animal handling check with disadvantage. Certainly, <laughs> I'm great at this, guys. Okay, so as you uh, as you fall unconscious, you just let go of the reins of this car that you're driving, and the people next to you are too busy trying to shut out all this, all these noises that are happening around them to notice, and with no guidance, the front cart starts to veer away from the road. I'm going to take the reins. <laughs> Xavier, the path is over this way. Where are you going? <laughs> so, uh... Well, that's fun. Let's see. At least I get some rest. You still need one for Aravan. I need uh, one for Aravan. I need one for Octavia. Octavia. 
Airbands up first. <laughs> okay. Octavia. Or oh no, that was for Airvan, right? Yeah. Airvan was first, Octavia second. Okay, well Airvan with your ninety eight for the next forty six hours. You lose the ability to speak. <laughs> All Thank right. God. You didn't have Thank God. <laughs> and with a 15. <laughs> oh, for the next 60 hours. Uh, Octavia, when, when she gets... Or, I'm just going to uh, text her, and we'll find oh, out yeah. what she thinks. But she is going to be experiencing vivid hallucinations. Oh god, the elks are back! <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm out for the next day and a half. I don't have to hear it. So nothing <laughs> really changed. <laughs> that's that's certainly one way to look at it. So. Really, Caden got it off easy. Well, it depends how open IMSA is to our newfound <laughs> closeness. It depends on how much Octavia wants to talk to you. Airman's clearly trying to object to your closeness, but he's unable to actually object. Uh, so, Airman, since guys. you're the only one, <laughs> since you're the only one who's paying attention. <laughs> but you can't speak. Um, <laughs> make me an athletics check to see if you can try to get the cart back on on track before something bad happens to it. Oh no! No pressure, okay. right? <laughs> Since the horses haven't like gotten spooked and tried to run or anything, so they're just you know plodding along just kind of drifting off to the side where the the reins are kind of laying to one side so the lead horse keeps trying to go that direction. And eventually uh, you run over and grab the reins and, and walk it back. And over the course of the next uh, hour and a half, as each of you kind of takes turns clearing out these mushrooms and, and having them scar your brain, you are eventually able to make your way through the field of mushrooms. Everyone on the caravan has been affected. That's, Everyone that's seems good. to be having strange behaviors. <laughs> Some people... Everyone in the caravan is having a bad mushroom trip. <laughs> <laughs> Some people seem to have gotten off slightly better and but you you see people in the caravan who are just babbling non-stop talking to anybody who's around them and talking to no one when no one comes is no one is sitting there some people are just weeping uncontrollably you see a couple who are just laughing they can't stop laughing there are some who have basically just hidden under you know, a blanket or, or in the back of a cart and no amount of coaxing can bring them out. But there are enough mostly functional people to to get the caravan out of this mushroom field. Hmm. What would you guys like to do from there? Hopefully Airvan puts me in the canvas covered cart so when I wake up I can investigate their shit. Airvan's a little preoccupied. Oh no, no. That's just, that's just me mumbling in my sleep, that's all. I guess Airvan's just gonna quietly continue along the path. Okay. 
just continue up the tradeway? Yep. Because, <laughs> you know, nothing bad has happened following this path, so might as well keep going. <laughs> All right, well, you managed to... Uh, the rest of that particular day seems to go without too much trouble. And everyone is able to settle in for the night. But it's clear that no one gets a good night's sleep that night. I do. Everyone seems to be having nightmares, except those who <laughs> just are unconscious. And not. <laughs> I'm going to wake up refreshed, and everybody's going to be all like dreary <laughs> but it is now 8.40 do we want to take a short break here yeah sure did it really take us almost two hours to get out of the mushroom field uh, we started kind of late more like no, an hour and ten minutes yeah. I didn't call in until 7.40 so it only took an hour, not two. I'll be right back. Ready. All right. We're taking a break. All right. Cool things. Before that, we were just continuing along. Everybody's affected and having bad dreams. Yep. Except for me. I'm having a grand old sleep. <laughs> Lazy half elves. Hmm. I'm not a half elf. Oh, oh. What I'm else? A wood elf. God, you're worse Lazy than me. <laughs> Lazy rogues. Lazy. <laughs> God damn it. Always sleeping on the job. <laughs> well, you know. I feel like there was maybe something very strikingly obvious that we just struck and missed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. The one person that was really good with nature type things is not here anymore. I know, he's gone forever. Like, well, trying to block our ears didn't do anything. No, I just passed out. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's like there's some sort of psychic component to it or something, or it's just that loud, and it's like, we got nothing to deal with that. Mm -mm. Yeah. If only we had someone that knew, like, silence or something. Yeah, Cast I was looking through what I did know, and it's just, got nothing. <laughs> We 
you know, gosh, maybe the uh, purified food. <laughs> <laughs> to purify mushroom before cutting them open. That's what I was wondering if like healing magic would actually work on it versus something else. Okay, everybody back. Yep. Yep. All right. So, uh, who wants to make me a D20 roll? I don't know. They haven't been going very well lately. <laughs> Shit. Oh, jeez. What have you done? I don't know. I'm unconscious. Does it count? So... <laughs> the rest of that day is particularly somber as everyone kind of deals with the fact that basically the entire caravan has been traumatized in some way shape or form but luckily nothing seems to have cost anyone you know some of the older caravan hands know you're getting close to Daggerford and over the course of the next next couple of days, everyone manages to recover from their various ailments. Xavier wakes up having no memory whatsoever of anything that happened. He thinks he went to, to sleep and now he's woken up in a place he doesn't recognize and everyone keeps telling him it's three days later. Oh. Well. It took it took Aravan a couple of days to to find the ability to speak again. It was just he just it's not that he didn't have anything to say, he just couldn't he just couldn't force it out somehow. But a couple of good nights sleep and and getting away from everything has helped him recover. Oh my gosh, I can speak again. Damn. Caden, make me a charisma check. All right. There we go. You can do this one open. Hmm. So at first, Green Imps, I wasn't quite sure what was <laughs> up. And over the course of the next couple of days, even though she seemed to... It's like she kept forgetting random things. Like, memories weren't quite sticking with her over the, the last few days. Uh, she does notice that you tend to be staying a lot closer than she's really comfortable with. And so for the last day or so, it's she's been noticeably like trying to put more distance between the two of you. Playing hard to get, I see. But okay. <laughs> so eventually you, this wears off. So it does. But uh, your your relationship with her has, has taken a strange turn. That was bound Buffalo to happen sooner or later. Strange. <laughs> no, but not the stalker strange. strange. <laughs> yeah, slightly, <laughs> slightly stalker is strange. Always there with you forever. <laughs> uh, Octavia. see what was oh yeah she never did get back to me with what sort of hallucination she was having Dang it, Amanda. but we will find out and I'm sure they will be humorous <laughs> but overall oh and uh, and Numa luckily you're not asked to you know move any China 
or uh, or do anything, your uh, your employer notices that you seem to have a bit of the shakes, but he doesn't hold that against you because he also had developed kind of a a tick where uh, he he couldn't smile without his head kind of twitching to one side. And for a man who smiles a lot, that got annoying. But overall, you you recover relatively quickly from your various ailments. And over the course of another three days, you successfully arrive in Eckerford. And now... We will do the special, very infrequent event called Leveling Up. Well, uh, I'm not familiar with this. I know you're not. I know <laughs> you're not. <laughs> so, obviously, the uh, first thing is... We need to make rolls to see uh, how many hit points you guys gain. So. One bazillion. For Numa. Yes, what happened? You're leveling up now. Oh my goodness. For just walking through <laughs> mushrooms, it's awesome. So, you guys should be level five. It looks like you've already done some oh. of the level five stuff. Yeah, I thought we did this last time. That's right. Well, we... I announced that you were going to be leveling up, but we haven't actually done everything. At least I don't think so. I don't remember rolling for hit points. Uh, I don't think we did. Yeah. No, we didn't roll for hit points. Not so I'm even 50. Okay, so, Numa, I need you to roll a d8, and I shall roll a d8, and you shall gain the higher of the two. Roll well. Luckily for you, I rolled a five. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So your maximum hit points is now 45. Plus zero because your con is zero. Oh, yeah. I suck. Okay. Caden. Yours is 1d6. So if you'd like to roll a d6. I like that roll. All right. So you're going to gain eight hit points. So your new maximum is 49. Do I have higher health than the monk? You do. I am tank I told it you I'm slight. I'm slight. Don't make fun of me. So it, it seems strange, except that you have 10 hit points just because your constitution is higher that he doesn't yeah. have. True. I can Air outrun him. You are a D10. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, lucky for you. I rolled a nine. Nice. Thank you, sir. So that's 11 more for you. Buddy. Uh, Xavier is gone. We'll do his when he gets back. And Octavia... Hers is a D8. Should we let her roll for it, or do you want to roll for it? I'd say let her roll for it, so she can't blame me for anything. <laughs> Fair enough. So, what else have uh, are you guys getting? Well, with my shaking hands, I get to, I start to get the stunning strike, so I can interfere with the flow of the key in an opponent's body. I could spend a key point to attempt a stunning strike. You have to do a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of my next turn. Nice. Nice. Anything, uh, any other cool stuff at level five? Beginning at fifth level, you can attack twice instead of once whenever you take the attack action on your turn. Ooh, so that's before, very nice for you. There you go. Yeah, before I think I had to use a key point to be able to do that or something, but 
Yeah, or, but not only does that no, mean... it was my bonus action. That's what it was, wasn't it? What was it? I think you're thinking about your fighter. You could no, flurry of I blows could, uh, with a key point. No, I could as a bonus action. I could do one unarmed strike. That's what it was. So I could use right, my that's... I could use my monk attack and then do an unarmed strike. Now my monk attack, I guess, is I could do two attacks and then and still, still use a bonus just... action. Yeah. So we're talking a flurry. We're talking about like that sumo wrestler off of Street <laughs> Fighter now. Pretty much. Just a flurry of palms. In fact, <laughs> E-Honda. Yeah, right, E-Honda. <laughs> yeah. Let me double check this. So. Do-do-do-do. Uh, you are a disciple of the elements. Yes, I don't think I get anything yet on that. Once you reach fifth level in this class, you can in, you can spend additional key points to increase the level of an elemental discipline spell. So you can actually make your your elemental spells a little more powerful. Yeah, but I still only have the uh, fist of unbroken air. I think at this point. Uh, do you not get more than that? Well, I mean, so elemental attunement, I don't require any level. And I think I could get one other one. Yeah. Where did I read that? I didn't think I could just do any of them. I thought I had to pick one number. Let's see. It says, you know the elemental attunement discipline and one other elemental discipline of your choice. Whenever you learn a new elemental discipline, you can also replace one elemental discipline that you already know yeah, with a different discipline. Is, yeah. So you learn an additional one at six levels. So next level, right. yeah. you'll be able to do an additional one. Right. Yeah. But I believe like, um, yeah. Right. Then your flurry of blows, uh, meal after you uh, after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action, which means that you can now make two short sword attacks, and with a key point, make two unarmed strikes. So you can actually make four attacks in one turn. Yeah, with the key up, right. You're going to have to come up with some descriptive uh, attacks for me. <laughs> I may challenge you. Well, that would require you to hit something. Oh, oh man. You, let me rephrase that. You may still have to come up with some descriptive ways of me missing. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it suitably epic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even some of my best epic things had nothing to do with hitting people. That is true. So, okay. Caden, how about you? All right, so Caden gets two spells at level three, and he delves the, the mystic realm and pulls out dispel magic and slow. Nice. Ooh. Those sound fancy. <laughs> I, I think you're, you aren't going to like them, so I'll be happy with them. <laughs> and you picked the school of divination, correct? Yep. I don't, I don't think anything happens to level six with the schools. Right. So level six, you can do some other cool stuff. Yep. All right. Pretty sure that's all for wizards. Yeah, pretty much third level spells is, is your big gain at, at level five. Oh, and I get my uh, attack bonus goes up one. Spellcasting bonus, yeah. I guess. Proficiency bonus, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. I think everybody's proficiency bonus should go up one at fifth level. Yeah, I think it, that automatically calculated, but yeah. I think so, yeah. Yep. That means everybody's skill stuff just got better if they are skilled at, in a particular thing. That's handy. Yeah. Also, as always, you do have the option of multi-classing. So, 
you theoretically could have picked to level up in something other than your current class. But what class is better than wizard? I'm not saying you would have. I'm just saying it's, it's a possibility. <laughs> yeah, I could be less than a wizard, but who would do that? That's crazy talk. Uh, so what reason, about... The only reason I didn't multi-class this level is just so I could get my second attack at fifth level paladin. And so I can get access to second level spells. I was going to ask, so what about Aravan? Did he decide to go a different route? or? As for level six, that's probably where he's going to start multi-classing. But for five, he's got that. Now he's got his second swing and access to second level spells. Second level paladin spells. So he can make his own horse whenever he feels like it. So what else do you get? What, what, what sort of that's, spells do you now have access to? Let's see. So there's... Gosh. Uh, there's Aid, Branding Smite, Fine Steed, Lesser Restoration, Locate Object, Magic Weapon, Protection from Poison, and Zone of Truth. Depending on what ones I pick for the day. Yeah, I feel like there's a certain amount of overlap between you and Octavia. A little bit, but I also have access to spells, paladin spells she doesn't. I think she's got more cleric spells than that, though. And but still, looks like pretty it. cool. I know. Also, it looks like a fifth level, in addition to getting third level spell slots for Octavia, she's now also got that destroy undead thing she was looking for in the two of undead. <laughs> yes. Destroy undead would certainly yeah. be a bit more uh, impressive. So now all we have to do is just go back to that. Convince the caravan to go back to the mushroom field. <laughs> And Xavier, as a rogue, he will pick up an extra d6 of sneak attack damage. He gets That's uncanny handy. dodge, which is pretty handy. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to have the attack's damage. That's, that's pretty is. handy. <laughs> Uh, what else? He's an arcane trickster. So he doesn't yet have access to uh, second level spells. So he doesn't really get anything on the spell casting side. All right. Well, uh, like I said, well, if Octavia ever gets, ever comes back, or uh, when Lucas gets back, we'll we'll help finish their level up things. But you guys have reached the town of Daggerford. The caravan has made it quite a long way. And now you are only about a uh, a week and a half, or excuse me, you're about 15 days out of uh, Waterdeep. Which is one of the largest cities in, in the realms. Uh, Daggerford is a fairly nice sized settlement. And certainly has a uh, an abundance of of shops and and places to uh, conduct business should you wish to some of the caravan is stopping here but certainly not all and each of your employers is planning to continue on to waterdeep awesome is there anything that you guys 
have in mind that you'd like to accomplish while you uh, have a chance to, to visit a, a town. Certainly, I like to peruse the local spell selection. Okay. Just see what they have available. Well, let me. Uh, um, let me read you a quick description of the town. There it uh, is. Daggerford is a pastoral haven. Wide, sprawling hills nearby offer peaceful vistas, but are sometimes overrun by raiding orcs or goblins. The frequent caravans heading north to Waterdeep or south to Baldur's Gate need escort or guarding and can offer news of both of these cities. Several inns stand ready to accept visitors, except in the busiest of trade or festival periods, when they fill swiftly and many locals open up their homes to lodgers. Warriors in need of coin can help their purses by offering their services as trainers to the local militia or accompanying the town guards on its patrols. The city's led by a council, guarded by a militia, And most people in Daggerford tend to know each other, at least casually, by sight. Strangers are usually welcome, especially if they have coin. But they are certainly uh, not keen on seeing well-armed troublemakers come through town. There are a few inns. Well, for me, unless there's just something specific with... Uh a uh, cloister of my uh, uh, I guess my uh, clan of monkishness and or with our I guess our order of the harp I don't really have anything I'm interested in as a monk okay anybody else have uh any particular observations? Uh, kind of like you no, know, but I guess I'll go and try to see if there's a local order for the order of the gauntlet. Maybe ask around at a couple of taverns or something for them. Okay. Uh, so, Caden, if you'll make me an investigation check. And Aravan, if you'll make me an investigation check. All right. All right. So, Caden, it takes you a while, but you eventually come across a shop. It's not nearly as extensive as the one you found in Baldur's Gate. Uh, but there are... It is a merchant dealing in some magical items... And he does have a limited selection of, of scrolls. Uh, should you be looking for anything in particular, he can attempt to uh, look in his wares and see what he has available. All right. Does he have fireball or lightning bolt? He thinks for a minute and says, I... I believe I sold my last scroll of Fireball. Oh, that must have been four or five months ago now. Oh, don't come by many of those. And they seem to be always popular with the adventuring type. Who would who would guess? <laughs> Li lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. I think, I do think I've got one of those. Let me see. He goes back and starts digging into his his wares and after a few minutes he does come back and presents you with a a uh, a scroll that looks like uh, something that might be of interest as you unroll it and open it up you can see a, a description but instead of being lightning bolt, you, it actually says lightning arrow. 
Aha! Uh -huh. It is... Let's see. Is that even something I can learn? Uh, unfortunately, that's a ranger spell. Now, if we had a ranger, that might have been a thing. <laughs> we've never met a ranger. <laughs> Maybe we can find one here in the city. <sighs> All right. Um, and we can we can work out the haggling later. But I'd also like to see a stock of like any spells he does have. Okay. So while I'm doing that. Crap, my uh, my PDF just got closed. Hang on, let me get back to the spell lists. Amanda, she's hacked you. She did. Uh, so when you point out to him that that scroll is actually lightning arrow, he's like, Oh, I knew it was lightning or something. But I, I really do think I have a lightning bolt. Let me go look again. This time he disappears for a good ten minutes. But when he comes back, he has another scroll. He says, ah, yeah, this 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 one has lightning, too. Here, look at this one. <laughs> and this time you open it up, and it is, in fact, a lightning bolt spell. Excellent. Uh, he has a... a small collection of second level spells uh, he has the spell uh, hold person uh, alter self he has uh, Melf's acid arrow he has rope trick and he has scorching ray alright my notepad alright so we got lightning bolt which is uh, third steep. level rope trick yep uh, Melf's acid arrow always a yep. classic um, what were the others alter self which I already got but okay whole uh, person I've already got okay whole person Right, scorching Ray. And Scorching Ray. Alright, what about first level spells? First level, uh, he's got Burning Hands, Comprehend Languages, Expeditious Retreat, okay. Identify, Shield and Unseen Servant. All right. If I'm not mistaken, I can create scrolls. Am I imagining that? No, you can. All right. It takes a little time, but you can. So, how long is the caravan going to be in town? Overnight? Uh, probably, uh, probably, uh, it was about time for a rest day anyway. So they'll be here tonight and then all day tomorrow. All right. Those merchants so, who want to continue to do, to conduct some business before they travel on. So you, you want to keep going on the, the hackling now? Or, well, you figure out what you want and then we'll, we'll discuss costs and everything. Yeah, because... Just for the idea, like, I can create some scrolls of spells I know in exchange. Certainly things that he doesn't normally have access to. Right. Might offset costs. So, all right. I'll have to look up, I think, the uh, mechanism for creating scrolls. is Basically, you have to expend any material components that would be required. And you have to spend uh, not an, insig an insignificant amount of money to... Uh, for like the inks and things that you need to, to actually make it. But I will try to pull up these specific yeah, I, rules for that. Yeah, I can look for that while you're... Well, I think it's in the Dungeon Master's Guide, not the uh, uh, Player's Handbook. Gotcha. 
Okay. They don't want players so, cool Zen, stuff. why don't you look that one up for me? All right. Okay. I can still look it up. <laughs> Xavier. Yes. Now that you're back, back. you've successfully leveled to level five. Woo-hoo. So I believe you are a D8. So if you will roll a D8, and I will roll a D8, and we'll see how many hit points you gain. I got a three. You rolled a three, I rolled a five. I'll take the five. (laughs) So, your constitution is plus two. So you're going to gain seven hit points. So you now have 46 total hit points. I'll take it. Definitely going Rogue 5. So you are going Rogue 5. No, no it's Rogue 1. No, that, that's... Isn't that Luke's number? Rogue 5? No, that's Red 5. The movie? <laughs> okay, so... Uh, tell us about what you get at level 5. And why I, it's awesome. I get Uncanny Dodge. Which is pretty cool. Let me pull it up. So don't have it memorized. Uncanny Dodge, starting at 5th level. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to half the attack's damage against you. So once per turn, I can half damage against me. And once it, per turn? Wow. Yeah. I just use my reaction, so I can't take opportunity attacks, but... Meh. If I'm at range, I shouldn't have to be using my reaction anyway. So... And it's That's not, good stuff. It's not. It's not weapon attack or melee or range. It's so it's any any attack damage against me. I can use my reaction for it. So pretty cool. And I don't think I have to declare it either. I can say, "Oh, I got hit with that. Oh, they're doing a lot of damage. I'm going to have it." I think. Yeah, it just says I can half the attack's damage, so it doesn't say before or after or anything like that. Well, well it has to be after it's a hit. Right, after, well, I mean, before damage is said or... Yeah. Yeah, basically, you've got to, be, like, when you get hit, you have to be like, okay, I want to use Uncanny Dodge. Yeah. Not, you get hit, it's for 35, and you go, oh, now I'm going to use Uncanny Dodge. Yeah. Hopefully. Same thing as Shield, basically, then. Yeah. Yeah, you have to declare it before. And I get an extra die six of sneak attack, sneak attack damage. Um, so what are we doing in the city? Uh, well, this is just a, a waypoint on the trip to Waterdeep, okay. which is where most of the caravan uh, people are headed. Uh, there were a couple who stopped here, and now it's basically just. You've got kind of a day off to conduct business because some of the merchants are conducting business here. Okay. And then it's on to Waterdeep, which is about... uh, Let's see. Let me get an actual distance. It's 115 miles, so it's right at a 10-day away. Okay. Um, And we haven't got paid yet because we get paid at the end, right? Right. Um... I would like to have still been keeping an eye on the presumed cultist wagon. Okay. So, uh, if those guys are doing anything, seeking contacts, I would like to be trying to stay hidden uh, using the cloak just to maintain a uh, visual on those guys. Okay. Uh, other than that, I don't think, unless there's like a magic item shop or something around. I don't think that there's anything I need. My phone. I don't have my calculator. So yeah, that, that's that's it for me. Okay. Uh, for creating spell scrolls. Uh. Adam, I'm willing to kind of 
go back since it's the first time we really discussed the procedure. But basically, uh, you have to expend a uh, a spell slot and the material components to cast the spell to create a spell scroll. And normally, the creation process would take uh, 25 gold worth of effort per day. And a common item, like a spell scroll, would cost uh, 100 gold to manufacture. Now, I'm trying to look up exactly how much spell scrolls sell for using our same pricing, which is different than normal. So we will kind of finagle that. Okay, yeah, so... Be some sort of markup based on production. So, a level one spell scroll would be priced at 60 gold. So I'm going to say that it's going to cost you 30 gold worth of materials to manufacture. So basically you're going to be able to sell it to the merchant for about half profit. Okay. And I can probably argue that I can give him rare spell scrolls that he wouldn't normally get to offset whatever I'm a level two scroll would cost 120 gold. So let's see. If we assume that the person who made the spell scroll wanted to get some profit out of the transaction, right? And the vendor wants to get some profit out of the transaction, then we'll say it's basically a third of the cost of manufacture, a third for the original manufacturer, and a third for the seller. So in your case, it'd be 20 gold to make a level one. And it would be 40 gold to make a level two. All right. Which you could then sell for 40 and 80, respectively. Sell to a merchant. Yes. All right. Now, if you wanted to sell it to an adventurer, you could try to haggle for whatever you can get out of it. Because a store would likely charge 120 gold for a level two scroll. Yeah, they're not going to pay retail. Right. <laughs> I have a used spell scroll. You want to buy it? The only exception to that is if the material component costs more than that listed price. Uh, like a like a hero's feast or something, thousand gold piece, whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, depending on the spell, if it requires, like, 25 gold in some sort of reagent, then you can just tack that 25 gold of material costs onto the manufacturing costs. All right. And so, effectively, each day, you can put enough effort in to make 25 gold worth of stuff. So you could make a single level one spell scroll in a day. It'd take you two days to make a level two spell scroll. Oh, really? Yeah. That's the the time? Okay. All right, but I think I got enough level one stuff that he would be interested in. Like I said, I'll, I'll say that, you know, there's been plenty of non-combat days throughout this adventure. So if you want to say that you've been spending time and effort to manufacture spell scrolls, then you can, uh, you know, I, I can, we can come up with a reasonable number of spell scrolls you've been able to make. One a week, maybe? Yeah, I mean, because, again, it's going to take money from you currently to yeah. produce them, so... There's that, and then I wouldn't be spending spell slots all the time. I'm actually on duty and all that. Exactly. So, so yeah, so it's been basically seven weeks on the road so far, or seven, ten days on the road so far. Ooh, 35 gold. (laughs) All right. (laughs) 
So you could have up to seven level ones or, you know, like three levels. I have seven ones. levels of scroll to create. Yes. All right. So retroactively, let's say I did. So you'd be working up that list. Yep. And we'll figure stuff out. Uh, Xavier doesn't really have anything they, that he wanted to do. He said, keep an eye on the wagon guys. Numa said, you're kind of okay with what's been going on. No rule. Yeah, well, unless there's just an obvious thing that we need to do for the story that has has something to do with the, the harp, the harp clan Harpers. or the harpers. Yeah. <laughs> when I went to say that, I thought that sounded weird. Harpers. <laughs> but I guess that's what we were calling ourselves. Um, yeah. Well, this Daggerford is certainly a place that you could look around for like <clears throat> Harper symbols and you're certain you would be able to find someone who can pass messages on. Uh, you know, this is exactly the kind of settlement that the Harpers would have an agent or two in, even if it wasn't, you know, like a permanent stationing. Well, if, <clears> then throat> I, throat> I would take the, yeah, I would take the opportunity <laughs> to finish the letter that I've been working on uh, for <laughs> three years uh, now. For ten, seven, 10 days. Your seven chapter uh, letter. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the log of our travels. So yeah, I mean, uh, just for the sake of uh, uh, of being a good monk and and with my buddy Leos and I would send a letter to Leos and say we have made made it to Daggerford. We have eyes on our enemy and are tracking them. And as you're as you're looking around town, you find that uh, one of the shops has a uh, sign that hangs out in front of the shop. Isn't really a it doesn't really have a name or anything on it. It's just got a picture, and the picture is uh, basically of like a suit of clothing, and on the shirt, you see a, a symbol that you think you recognize as one of those that was a mark for the Harpers. So when you go inside, you find the merchant, and as you're chatting with him about you know what goods he has for offer, you drop a, a code phrase that uh, Leeson taught you which is westward wind blows lazy ducks <laughs> yes but the geese find nowhere to lie yeah. well that deserves a drink <laughs> <laughs> And as he responds with the uh, the phrase you were expecting, yet the geese find nowhere to lie. You now are aware that uh, he is someone that you can you can leave your message with, and it will get passed to the right people. Such a good spy. Natural. I like how Caden's writing in Draconic. <laughs> It's the, it's the language okay, of commerce. The <laughs> language of commerce. <laughs> Dragons like gold, so there you go. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you drop your letter off and are confident that you'll be able to get it into Leosin's hands soon. Uh, Caden, you've made 140 gold worth of stuff that you're confident you can sell for 280 gold or barter for 280 gold all right and so in exchange how many scrolls are you looking to acquire well i'm hoping to get as many of those as i can i'm not sure what they cost bartering wise uh, 
Okay, so bartering wise, a first or a second level spell, which, let's see, the rope trick, acid arrow, and scorching ray are 120 each. The lightning bolt is 200. And the burning hands, expeditious retreat, and unseen servant are 60. All right. Is there a skill check to improve that? Uh, you can make me a persuasion roll. Oh, that'll be interesting. You can do it. And because of the rarity of some of the items that you're offering, he's willing to uh, drop the prices by about 10%. All right. I'll take that. So that means you're going to be at, let's see, 180, 108, and 54. Well, I was going to say 200 for the lightning bolt, plus 360 for the second levels, plus 180 for the first levels. So that's 740 gold total. Minus the 280 for bartering of your stuff. So it's going to save you about 46 gold. But to buy all those things would still cost you uh, 414 gold. All right. I got that. Okay. So I'll take it out of my precious gems, get some of those converted. Well, precious gems, uh, they basically are, are convertible directly to cash. Yeah, so I've got so, six at 10 gold and eight semi-precious at 50 gold. Okay, well, then mark off. He likes oh. you. Mark off 400 gold worth, and he'll just take them as gems. All right. All my saving precious gems, gone. Okay. And in, in exchange for that, I get all those scrolls, yes? Yep. You now are the proud owner of those seven scrolls. So a scroll <laughs> of lightning bolt. Now remember, it also costs to... you money to learn them. Yes, I'm, I lost that 140. So I'm down to one, yeah, 160. Okay. Scroll of rope trick. I was just have to actually memorize them all that, but yep, that takes a little bit of time. But you're a wizard. Got nothing but time. It's what you do. <laughs> all right. Okay. And any chance of like any sort of light armor type stuff? Uh, are you proficient in light armor? Ah, shit, no, I'm not, am I? Because that's actually a thing. You can absolutely get some, but it will then interfere with your uh, your abilities. Never mind. That's why you have mage armor. That's true. So, spell casting in this edition, they don't have the spell chance failure, right? Uh, no, they don't. It's so if you were to wear armor that you're not proficient in, it's just a movement speed thing, right? It's more than that. It, it interferes with concentration. I thought. I think uh, so. At least. I don't know where it, if it says it. Anyway. Uh, if you wear armor that you lack proficiency with, you have disadvantage on any ability check, saving throw, or attack roll that involves strength or dexterity, and you can't cast spells. Oh. oh, just straight can't cast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just straight up can't cast. Okay. Definitely not doing that then. <clears throat> Are you sure? Pretty sure. Oh. Um, well, at level four, four, you could have taken light armor proficiency as your as a feat. I could have. I chose not to. <laughs> or you can... mithril armor somewhere. I think it is. And. I'll somewhere. Where is it? Under I'll eventually customs. get Tensor's transformation, and I'll be fine. 
Pincer's Transformation. What, what is that one? I don't know if it's actually in this edition or not, but that's one that turns, turns you him into a suit of armor. Oh. Well. All they got is the floating disc. You always <laughs> have the option of multi-classing, even if just for one level. You can multi-class as a fighter and gain light armor, medium armor, shield, simple weapons, and martial weapon proficiency. But, but then I won't be a wizard. <laughs> You'll be you, impure. I, does not compute. <laughs> if you multi-class as a bard, which is like a wizard, you get light armor. But, but spoonier. Great freaking abilities, though. Also gained the title of Mudblood. <laughs> oh! Oh! Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's throwing down the gauntlet. <laughs> well, he's a house elf, so whatever. <laughs> okay, so does anybody have anything else they'd like to do in town? Uh, if I can find just like a weapon smith. There's definitely a smith in town. All right. I'm looking to find just a glaive. Just a glaive. How many long weapons are glaive. you going to carry with you? All of them! <laughs> Every single one. I I mean, I still well, have a, a... I thought you had a glaive. I've got I, a halberd. You have a halberd. Never which mind. is mechanically the exact same thing as a glaive. Costs the same, weighs the same, does the same damage and damage type, and all that other stuff. So this is purely just for flavor reasons that I'm looking to find a glaive. <laughs> I just see him walking around looking like a like a hedgehog or something. Like a porcupine. <laughs> nah, I got a bag of holding for all my <laughs> my armory. <laughs> is there like some kind of hidden agenda that I'm sensing or something? I mean, so maybe. <laughs> now, see, the glaive is basically a sword blade on a stick, whereas a halberd is an axe blade on a stick, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. There's really nothing well, I, I can do. Um, luckily for you, this smith uh, occasionally sells goods to caravan guards and. Uh, soldiery types who make their way through so he does in fact have a glaive it's not anything special really uh, but he took it in trade at one point and it is yours if you want it absolutely it'll only cost you 20 gold I will happily pay your requested price So, it is now approaching 940. Uh, Octavia is still missing in action. And I think this is probably a good place to halt mm -hmm. for today. And then pick up... And then pick up next week uh, on Tuesdays. Because our our one party member who was... Conflicted about Tuesdays is just going to take a break for a while. So we will be back to our regularly scheduled Tuesday programming. And when we get back, what you're going to find out is what's going on with the cultists. Because, Xavier, as you've been watching them, you notice that as the caravan's preparing to leave, after a day of rest in Daggerford. The cultists seem to be back up to full strength. Ooh. It looks like they've managed to recruit some new guards. <laughs> Does one of them look like Jesco? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know who Chesco is. I, but... I, I heard I heard the name some guy was yelling in uh you know Waterdeep. 
Didn't he slay mm-hmm. like a, a a rat or something? Boulder's Gate. Boulder's Gate. No, he was in Boulder's Gate. He was a uh, raven about Tiamat or something. The guards were talking about it. It's all over the place. Oh, Xavier, that was you. You told us. No, please. Do I look like one to worship a dragon? Yes. <laughs> yes. Let me spit my beer. <laughs> I don't know, I think the mud blood was the one that got me the most. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty good. All right. Well, unless anybody has any objections, that's where we're going to call it for the night. Yeah, that's a good one. Right? We're going to spend another three hours talking about how we're going to attract people. So Shrooms. And shrooms. I said, I... I, I wanted to I wanted to throw that one in there somewhere because I just thought this is gonna be cool. <laughs> and how the hell are you supposed to get through that? I well, couldn't figure it out. Now that you guys have survived it, which wasn't really a challenge, <laughs> uh, let, let me share with you. Kind of Let's see. I don't think this will share too much as long as. Can you guys open that? How yes. do you open yeah. it? Click on the dragon. Click on the dragon. Oh, the dragon. So the important thing to notice is the paragraph underneath the link to the map. Mm. Where it says they ah. can be identified with a successful DC-15 intelligence nature check. <laughs> we didn't get that. But if the roll is 10 to 14, the characters misidentify <laughs> them and believe they are deadly poisonous. Uh, Turns out both of you, one of you rolled a 10 and one of you rolled a 13. Uh, figures. <laughs> we just reinforced our wrongness. <laughs> Got the stink eye from Octavia because of her. <laughs> huh. So. Oh, my you, idea for a scythe would have been perfect. You yep. basically sweep them aside. Yep, anyone can literally sweep a path through the mushrooms with a heavy broom. And you, needs but to you buy a scythe now. But you still take uh, you still take the effect. Yeah. There was no yeah, way to avoid taking the effect. Say. You see ten. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Did we all fail every check? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot of twos, threes, and fours rolled on those Constitution saves. Wow. Uh, I can't believe I rolled a 100 on that fell unconscious. That sucked. Hmm. Now I'm just wondering what a 1 would have happened. Die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, if you want to know what would have happened there, because uh, there again, I just went straight to a table out of the DM's manual. Oh, no. <laughs> Page. Where was it? <laughs> That's the monster manual. A madness table or something? That's the one. Ah. I went to the long term madness table. So, if you rolled a one, you would have felt compelled to repeat a specific activity over and over. <laughs> such as washing hands, touching things, praying, or counting coins. Oh, God. That's awesome. <laughs> and I got unconsciousness for two days. Awesome. Could have been worse. As far no, as bad as good, that's, that's pretty easy. No, that was actually the best. I mean, I could have driven off a cliff or something with that wagon, but... Yeah, you could have been blinded or deafened. And run over your friend to Aravan, who was right in front of you. Yeah, it was been alright. You had your shield up, it was fine. You had your shield up. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to have to have a talk about that, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, this was a perfect opportunity, because, you know, this mildly toxic spores that are just permeating the air as you guys make your way through. The, the temporary madness. I was like, this is just going to be cool. Yeah. 
Oh, it, the madness set in in the first 40 minutes of trying to figure out what the hell we were supposed to do. Yeah. No, no. If you rolled an 86 to a 90, that would have been it, because then you would have had the confusion spell. <laughs> oh. Well, once again, guys, I've had fun. Awesome. I hope you've had fun. Yeah, good times. And uh, remember, when when Octavia comes back next week, we have to, uh, if she doesn't come up with something, we'll have to describe how she kept going on and on and 